Hey, it's Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with Brian Beauchamp, and he is an MMA referee and a judge. And uh, we're here to actually talk about a few things today. Um, your own career doing this, but also the rise of MMA in China, and also UFC 165, where if people uh, Google your name and UFC 165, some people had some not some so pleasant things to say about how you judged that. So we'll give you a chance to answer those questions all right but first and foremost I kind of want to let people know what um, what your credentials are why what you know what why'd you get into refing and judging and why do you think you're uh, you know you've got a good eye for that well I mean I started uh, obviously I started judo when I was 10 years old with my, with my brothers and uh, 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 three of us were on the Canadian national team for uh, uh, 10 years my brother went to two Olympic Games for Canada and uh, uh, fought for a bronze my only Olympic Games so uh, I've been around combative sports since I was a young boy and uh, I started uh, getting an interest in MMA, obviously, just like everybody else, just being a fan and watching it and uh, enjoying it, and then uh, uh, eventually I switched over to uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, when I was in my 40s, and I went to Brazil four or five times to learn the learn the art, and uh, so I've been to Japan, been to all the homes of, uh, of the arts, and uh, now I'm a judo and a BJJ black belt. Nice, nice, and we should say that you're here in Los Angeles, you're competing this weekend. Yes, I'm competing in the World Masters and Seniors uh, uh, championships, and uh, I won. I won the uh, title last year. I was world champion last year, so I'm trying. I'm trying to defend. Looking for a repeat. I'm going to try. What do you think of the competition this year? Have you scouted it out? Is it a lot of the same guys, or you see some new faces? Uh, uh, there's some new faces, but yeah. uh, uh, I'm better prepared this year than I was last year. So uh, worked harder. And, um, so you know, I'm sure it's, it's always going to be difficult. You know what's going to happen. You you got to perform. No different than anything else. When the when the when the bell goes or the uh, you, it's all about performing. You you got to put it on the line. Do you think that your career as a referee and a judge gives you a different sensibility when you're competing yourself? More of an awareness maybe of what you should do or how you're being perceived by the judges? Or I mean, the biggest thing was uh, switching over from judo, which is uh, uh, they, they've tailored it in the last few years because it wasn't wasn't that appealing to uh, the, the television audience for the Olympics, so they changed some of the rules to make it a lot more active and offensive uh, as far as the gripping and breaking grips. So now uh, in BJJ, it's a different rule set, so uh, some of the problems when I switched over were deprogramming myself from a judo mode into a BJJ mode just when it, came, when it comes to points and positions. but. That took a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, I've had some good coaches, so I got adjusted. Nice. Well, I we should talk about uh, Ruff. Well, this is the Rannick Ultimate Fighting Federation, and this is how we first came to meet Brian. Um, this is a program from, from one of their events, and uh, you guys can see right here, we've got the MMA Heat logo in there because we've been working with these guys uh, to help promote MMA in China, and also then there's a nice little, there's a shot of Brian. He can get the, how do you like that? I'm saying, I'm saying Herb Dean would probably like a page in a UFC program. I bet he would love that. But uh, no, that's kind of great. I wonder how you got started with this organization because um, we know that the UFC is trying to uh, make a play in, in China. They're going to have the ultimate fighter over there. We know that China is kind of the next great market for MMA. And you got in on the ground floor with, with, with these guys. So how did that come about? Well, the owner uh, uh, of Ruff is actually a Canadian. Yeah. I moved to Shanghai uh, about 12 years ago. Um, he was, just like everybody else, being a fan originally of a sport, decided to invest in, it, invest in the MMA and uh, he applied for a license with, with the Wushu administration in China uh, to get sanctioned by the government. This, I know his permit took him four years yeah. and uh, uh, when he got sanctioning, because he wanted to do it right, then they started with their events and, uh, and their, their master plan on how to, how to uh, grow the sport. And with 1.5 billion people in that country, you can see the market is absolutely massive. For sure. Yeah, we've spoken with Joel. Uh, he's a really good guy. I want to talk about how you see it when you when we look at the, the skill level some people are like yeah but these guys will get their butts kicked by guys in the UFC okay a they're aware of that and b yeah a lot of people would you know it, it's on the rise but when you see them how would you assess the skill level of, of Chinese fighters right now well I think you know the the UFC is the 500 pound gorilla you mm -hmm. can't compare the rest of the world with the UFC because it's taking the elite from all over the world and all the different disciplines and it's bringing them into one organization and they're matchmaking that way you still need the B leagues and the C leagues, the feeder uh, organizations, uh, to to feed the, uh, to feed the UFC, obviously. And and, and China, with uh, obviously the martial arts is uh, just historical there when it comes to uh, Sanda and uh, uh, some of the different arts there. But uh, I was I was stunned to be honest and how good the level was. Uh, I've refereed in uh, Afghanistan fights for the troops. I've refereed in India Super Fight League. I've refereed in the Caribbean, Canada, the United States, and. Uh, 
the last event I just did, I was, I was, I was just absolutely amazed, and uh, I, I did seven of the ten fights on the card, mm -hmm. and it's the first time I've refereed a card ever, anywhere in the world, that there was one fight that wasn't that good. <laughs> there was nine fights in a row, nine in a row that right. were that were amazing. Like I was on the edge of my seat, and yeah. I was refereeing. I had to pretty well. Remember my, you know, uh, uh, pinch myself and say, "Hey, you're a referee, and not be a fan, and watch the fight." They were that good, so wow. I meant, I've never seen uh, people. Uh, maybe it's part of their culture. They, they, these guys were 0 and 1. Some of them were 1 and yeah. 1, and they fought till they couldn't even move. I'm mm -hmm. talking about uh, just with just pride. I mean, just I've never seen the heart and soul of, of fighters uh, uh, like I saw there, and it was just amazing. And there, and I'm talking about. Uh, uh, you know, knockouts and, and TKOs and technical submissions where they're choking people unconscious. And I think people don't know what they're doing over there. They're badly mistaken. There, there was two BGJ black belts on the card, and one guy got knocked out, mm -hmm. and, and the other guy, uh, their, one of their champions, won by decision. But uh, fought, a, fought a tough Russian. But, but I mean, uh, I mean, just the skill level. I mean, the, the market for that. China obviously uh, is to me is, is incredible. Well, I've also spoken with some of the fighters, and their humility is astonishing. Um, and maybe it is because some of them are only one and one or two and one or something like that. And then you know yeah. we'll stay up late three in the morning watching a feed, and like you just said, my goodness, they are scrappers. Oh. Um, and do you find too that maybe it's a, a generalization, but that the just they're 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 known for being competitive they're known for since this is with with done in part with the government that is government sponsored do you get that sense of feeling though like when you see the olympics and how precise all the chinese are and everything is there any sense of that overarching like chinese feeling of we've got to excel in this now as well since we're even trying it we better excel well you got to remember uh, uh, uh the average person has to remember you're, you're talking uh most unique market in the world. It's not, not like anywhere else to do business, and it's not more like anywhere else in the world when it comes to sport. They have schools where they take students or the kids when they're four or five years old, say, you're going to be a gymnast, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, and, and you're a robot. You throw you into the school, they educate <laughs> yeah. you, and they train you. It's, it's, like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a factory for athletes. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about these uh, people have a chance to make a living in MMA and become not just national champions, but uh, basically uh, celebrities in their own country, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's when you, when you, there's a lot, there is a lot of poverty there, too. Yeah. So uh, when, you, when you look at the opportunities they have, and they're on, a, a, obviously, a television platform, they're being streamed around the world, and they're on national television in China, that's a reason right there to say, hey, here's a chance. There's something I do good, martial arts, it's a chance for me to really pursue this. And like we said, Ruff has already been working there, and the uh, ultimate fighter is going to happen there. Now, how do you think the UFC will do in China? Do you, do you think the way that they promote their shows around the world and the way that they build their fighters up, do you think that's going to translate, or do you think they have to have some different sort of culture nuances to work there well I think uh, uh, there is going to be some cultural nuances I believe and they're only the UFC is going into Macau mm -hmm. Macau is a pretty well this is what people get a little bit confused on it's not mainland China right it's, it's a different currency different country yeah. different passport the whole nine yards so uh, I know that some of the people that have been haven't have been cut from rough there they, they made the ultimate fighter show in uh, Hong Kong from what I understand so uh, and Macau so my, my information is that Ruff still has the best athletes mm -hmm. in MMA signed to their organization, but I think it's obviously they're a great promoting machine and they're, they're, the, uh, they're the big wheel and they're going to promote anybody mm -hmm. they have. Yeah. Uh, having Kung League over there is going to be a great yeah. uh, also. And we can all get along. There's enough MMA to yes. go around everywhere. So Brian, I mentioned when we first started this that we were going to talk about UFC 165. You got a little bit of heat for that and uh, it's funny because just MMA on... Heat. Uh, yeah, you got some MMA heat. Yeah, just off it. camera, you should see. He was like, oh really? Yeah, I know they said that. Oh really? Alright, so now's your chance. So here's what happened. It was the first UFC event that you you were judging, yes. right? You judged the Alex Caceres fight um, where he fought Roland Delorme, yeah. and you also uh, judged the um, the Prezeris fight, right? When he took on, um, I'm okay now. Jesse Ronson. I, Jesse Ronson, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. Two out of the three judges saw it, the other guys winning. Mm -hmm. You're the one who saw it for Prezeris, I mean uh, for Ronson, and you're yes. the one who saw it for Delorme. Yes. So why did you see it those? Those well, uh, first of all, people have to understand, uh, we, the, the, me and the other judges, we agreed on two rounds. Okay. 100%, we were exactly the same on the two rounds. We only disagreed on one round. Okay. That's where people get confused. Right. 29, 28, just for the opposite side. So that one round was very close. Mm -hmm. 
the whole argument in the press was that 20 reporters said that they didn't agree with me. Right. And I don't care what 20 reporters say. Yeah. Because I forgot more martial arts than they'll know in their entire career. So I've been doing it since I was a boy. Yeah. I know what I'm looking at. I'm grappling on the mats four or five days a week with. Uh, with uh, world champions, and I believe uh, I know what uh, you know what a good position is, and when someone's working to finish that, it's sports entertainment. The whole idea of uh, MMA is to try and finish your opponent. So uh, that's the way I saw it, and I stand by. And so. You know, it's interesting because uh, the way uh, fights are judged, it's not like you can go back after the end, after the fight and go, oh yeah, now that I think of it, you know, this guy really did win. You know, you've already placed your card in and you've already made yes. the judging. But uh, in, in, when those are read and then when everybody starts pointing at you going, what the hell did that guy see? I mean, right right there in the moment, is there any part of you that goes, ah, geez, did I see it right? Or you're, you feel 100% well, confident? Well, I mean, uh, I, I, I sort of... Uh, make the analogy to refereeing uh, when I'm when I'm uh, not necessarily not necessarily in submissions, but certainly in knockouts or TKOs. You always go on your, your initial instinct. Mm -hmm. Am I? Do I think the guy was out? If somebody questions you once in a while, you get a little bit of indecisiveness that creeps back in your just human nature and say, you know, did I see that right or was that right? Mm -hmm. I think that's normal. But I always go back to my original instincts. What did I? Initially, see just my split second. Did I see what I thought I saw? Yes, I did. That's why I stopped the fight. Now, will you go back and watch a fight again? Will you go back and look at, at Caceres uh, and Delorme and watch that again? Or do you, once the fight's over, do you just go? I, I haven't watched it to this point, right. no. And so, in that fight, do you remember which round? So, you gave it you gave it 29 28, but you gave it for Delorme. Yes. So which round did you... gave it 29-28 just for the opposite side. Right. So basically two and three, though, um, the other guys thought two and three, Alex won. Uh, I believe so. I mean, I have talked to the other yeah. judges, judges about it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, obviously the one round was a bit of a swing round. Mm -hmm. No different than, I, I believe, the, the, uh, I don't even think, I don't. to me it's a non-controversial. Yeah. It's not controversial. 29-28, there's nothing controversial about 29-28. Mm -hmm. Talking about the main event is more controversial. Than well, that's what I was going to ask you. If you if you had been judging that fight, what do you think you would have uh, given it? Well, I mean, I I, I wasn't judging it, but uh, I obviously I gave the first two rounds to Gustafsson, mm -hmm. and I gave the last two rounds to Jones. Mm -hmm. So uh, believe me, I believe the third round was a swing round, uh -huh. and it really depends on your your background and the way you, you look at a fight or judge right. a fight. Right. Right. I gave the first three to Alex. There you go. My background is I'm one of those dumb reporters. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> but I didn't uh, say they're dumb. I no, just no, said no, yeah, yeah, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You didn't say you're dumb. No, I actually. It's funny though because not everybody saw Alex winning the second round. Obviously, I, I to, to me, both two and three were very tight, and I remember watching that fight going, oh the tide is turning, John is coming on, you know, and I thought that the champ was like, all of a sudden turned it on, but I thought that Alex did enough to still win that round, but I, you know, and I had said immediately after that fight, hey, yeah, I saw it two, uh, three to two gusts, I can totally see it going the other way, I, I, I'm not like freaking out about it, John is an incredible champ, like, you know, let's just say thank you <laughs> I mean, for that fight, anyway. I mean, it's a good point you bring up, but it, 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 it we're, uh, I just come from the ABC conference, yeah. Association of the Boxing Commissions. And I took a boxing referees course there, and they had a hundred people that were in the industry. Mm -hmm. These people, they're not off the street. Res wrestling right. and boxing judges already. And then we judged, all 100 of us judged one boxing fight. It wasn't even that, it was a round. Mm -hmm. And they had, a, at the end, they had 13 piles of different scores. Different, wow. Yeah. And, now the, and, and, and the, the instructor basically said, we want to get these 13 piles down to three piles. In one round? No, it couldn't yeah. have been no, one no, round. Sure. One yeah, fight. I was, was going to yeah. say, yeah. like, dude, there's yeah. not yeah. a lot of... That's okay. true. Yeah, no, but one fight, yeah. right. One okay. fight. They had right. 13 different scores. Right. And they said the goal wasn't to get one score. It was really, by the instructors, was just to get three scores. Just get three scores, right. right. They said there's a million different things that go into play when it comes to your influences and the way you look at a fight. And right. I mean, if people want everybody to score fights the same way, why don't we just have the referee hold the arm up of who he thinks won the fight? Yeah. Forget about judges. Yeah. Let the ref call it. And I would just say it like this. If, you, if you're on trial for murder, do you want to be trialed, tried by a judge or, or a judge and jury? Mm -hmm. Or just a jury? Do you want one guy to decide your fate in life? Or do you want 12 people? And there might be someone sympathetic that might save your life. You right. want 12 people to be a judge. Yeah. So I don't understand uh, uh, what people want. They want everybody to judge it the way they saw it. It doesn't matter what they saw. It's a matter, it matters what I saw. You hear that, trolls who are mad at his scoring? Last question for me is, what do you, what do you, what do you think... Uh, I, uh, 
a fighter has to do to get a 10-8 round in MMA? That's a great question. Great question. Uh, uh, a lot of times we talk about this because a 10-8 round is, does the guy have to be knocked down to get a 10-8 round? That's always a great question. But uh, it's hard to get a 10-8 round when it's just a grappling match, I believe, because you're a good chance you're taking his back and maybe do a little bit of ground and pound. But I think it's hard, technically hard, to get a 10-8 round when, you, when it's predominantly a grappling round. 10-8 round, I don't, I don't believe you have to knock the guy down to get a 10-8 round. He can still be on his feet because I've stopped fights where the guy's on his feet, but I believe he's, he's KO'd or TKO'd on his feet. So uh, you can, I, I, I would lean towards calling a 10-8 round if he's been hurt and he's got a lot of damage. Domination and damage are the two things that I uh, bring into play when it comes to a 10-8 round. I lied. That's not the last question. Uh, I guess the last question would be, you know, we've talked to Herb Dean about this too. When you, when you do jump in and, and, and wave somebody off, jump in and get in the mix of something, and then the guy jumps, pops right back up, but I was still here, you know, I was still in it, I was still in it. I mean, that really... I gotta believe that you know your job is there to, to to save the fighter and let him fight another day. But but how much dialogue is going on in your head in the you know few seconds before you're like, is this it? Is this not it? Is this it? Is it not it? I think uh, obviously in the bigger bigger stage, uh, uh, you give them more latitude because yeah. you got a lot of, a lot of stake. Uh, so so in the case of let's say Frank Mir and and Josh Barnett, would you have given Frank a little bit more time? Well, I wasn't the referee. You, no, I know you weren't. I'm not but, gonna commit to that. Okay. I want to be in there myself, and, and it's hard for me to put myself in referees because I'm not two feet from the guy like yeah. the ref is. Yeah. Even if I'm sitting ringside, I wouldn't uh, pass judgment on another referee if he's standing two feet from the guy. He's seeing something that I'm not. That's what people don't realize. They're watching either on TV or they're judging from, uh, 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 from the crowd or they're sitting in the, in the media seats. Again. i got to go back to the media again. They're still we get great seats, 50 Brian. feet away, we get great and they're seats. not seeing what I see. They're not <laughs> seeing what I see. Is it 50 feet? I'm like three. I, literally, if that's the case, I'm here like a lot of the time. I don't know if that's 50 feet. But still, you, you, I think the, the bottom line is that uh, uh, um, you know you do have the best seat in the house. And when it comes to, uh, uh, obviously, the, I think what you're uh, trying to allude to, Karen, is a flash knockout. When the guy's yeah. clipped for a second, boom, he's out for a second, right. he recovers. Right. Even on the second hit, sometimes the first hit knocks him out, the second hit brings him around. Right. And all of a sudden he's in, he's okay, I'm in the fight. And the referee stopped him. Right. He made a decision maybe after, initially after the first hit. It's a tough one, but, uh, uh, you know, it's really what you're seeing and what do you think. Uh, you can take another couple shots or, you, you know, it's not about, this is what people don't understand. It's not about him being unconscious. People think it's, he was okay. No, he's not okay. I, in my mind, his eyes rolled back in his head. He's, he's, he's right out on his feet. I've seen guys with their eyes wide open, mm -hmm. and they're out. They're out, yeah. And I stopped the fight. So, uh, uh, you know, i got to live with the consequences of the guy getting his brains bashed in, mm -hmm. in because I didn't stop the fight. So I'm going to give him every chance because it is pro MMA, but still, if I don't think he's going to, if, uh, if he's at the point of no return where he's not going to recover, I'm going to stop it. Well, it's almost a no win for you anyway, because there are times when we think, you know, somebody stopped the fight too late and we're freaking out that, you know, you let a guy take too many punches. So I, I understand it it's, it's difficult. It's a no win. So when's the next time, are you going to be judging and refing any more UFC or is your next thing, are you going on the road again internationally? Uh, I'm going back to China, I believe, in November. Uh -huh. And then uh, I've got... Uh, um, uh, I've got some other events in Canada coming yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for coming to the Tap Out Gym here in Los Angeles to talk to us, and uh, wish you the best of luck in your tournament. If you see if you get that repeat win. I'm gonna do my best, and thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian Bolsham. You're watching MMA Heat.